let's talk about the, the shoulder and, and braking mechanics. I know this is about Kimura's from Closed Guard, but the reason that Kimura's from Closed Guard can be kind of difficult is, you know, that there's all these different theories of, you know, how to break things, right? And if you look at Dan Hurst's system, it always talks about having pull dominant mechanics, which, if you want to break somebody, is a really good idea. Um, if you're trying to do things in a slow and controlled fashion, it's not always, you know, using those hyper-efficient things, uh, it's not always as good, right? So, like, if I'm, you know, working with you and I don't want to break you, I don't want to rip into submissions, you know, just like I wouldn't rip into a heel hook, you know, I'd set the position and, you know, slowly work into it. Um, the shoulder is interesting because we have so many different ranges of motion depending on the exact orientation of things, okay? So let me break you for a second. Just on your knees right here. Right, right. here. All right. So sit on this and straight. So if his hand is down here towards his waist, okay, I can move his hand pretty far behind his back, right? If it's up here, I can move it that far, okay? There's <clears throat> so we've, we've got primarily a, a twisting mechanic that we're trying to do if we're trying to break the shoulder, right? Um, there's, there's some where you can bend it, but primarily this is, this is, we're after a twisting mechanic to break the shoulder, okay? Which means when you, let me borrow you, which means when we've got somebody, so when we've got somebody who's very flexible, when we go to, we go do the Kimura, we get here, and you see people do this, and it's like, she doesn't care, right? So, one of the ways that, like, even for my side control Kimura, the way that I think about it is, okay, so we know that bringing the elbow up higher is going to help, right? And you get told that for Kimura, but people don't take it as seriously as they should. And it's just like on the Americana, you want to drop things down towards the waist, that helps to restrict how much motion there is in the shoulder. So if I'm doing a Kimura on somebody, and I do this, and nothing happens, notice I'm blocking that shoulder there. I go here, and I walk it up a little bit more. Walk it up a little bit more. Walk it up a little bit more. This looks freaky, right? But watch what happens. I get up here, and I go until it doesn't really move anymore. Oh, you're, you're, you're just like one of my students at home. I'll keep going up here. Oh, this is awesome. You're going to be so much fun. <laughs> there we go. All right, my goal is always to only have about that much motion at the, when I'm actually doing the submission, All right? If I can't do the submission with about that much motion, I adjust the mechanics until I get it the way I want, okay? Can you also achieve that by cutting a 45 degree angle so you're laying across her shoulder girdle, which would be her Yeah, like, so the, like this kind of... No, the other direction. Yeah, so you're that Up way. here? Yeah. But then I can't prevent her from scooting up. It's, it's even... Uh, but laying even, flat. Even laying flat. Yeah. She's, she, can, she can always bridge. All right, if I... Like... That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're putting pressure on her, but you can. Doesn't matter. She can always bridge. I can't. Still I can't. Put this down, so you're isolating the shoulder. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. No. I mean, look. I'm a lot bigger than her. Yeah. She can always bridge. Okay. Right. So I can't depend on just putting my weight on top of her. Right. If I put my, if I get here, and I'm going to get my center of gravity right over top of her. Yeah. Right. <laughs> bridge. Easy, right? Yeah. Yeah. I can't stop that, so I can't rely on my Low weight. Pressure. Okay. Right. So, like in the case where I'm doing a side control Kimura, that's why I've got my knee up here. Okay. Right. That makes it so. You, I, now, if I block you from, you know, bridging up a little bit to get over that knee, I can finish that Kimura. Okay. Now I know this is kind of theory heavy, but this is going to help all of your submissions on the shoulder. I like okay. theory heavy. <laughs> so now let's talk a little bit more about what kind of things can enhance the submission on the shoulder. All right. So when we're submitting somebody, we're trying to either twist a joint or 
we're trying to hyperextend a joint. Okay? That's the typically the primary breaking mechanics. We can enhance those breaking mechanics by either compressing or expanding the joint. So like if I'm doing a knee bar, I'll either compress into the knee or expand the knee. Same thing with an arm bar, right? If I'm doing an arm bar, I'll just go back here and just try to hyperextend with my hips or anything like that. If I can expand the joint, right, we go back here, I'm gonna get it a lot sooner. All right, so the, uh, we're also dealing with, you know, okay, what if the person is taller? You know, what if I'm doing this with everything that I've got and it's still not quite working? Like most of the time, especially in friendly training, this is going to work like 95% of the time, okay? Just that pulling mechanic and, and expanding the joint and not having to do any twist, which is what I like about it, right? But in the cases where it doesn't work, you know, competition, right? People are willing to take a little bit more risks with their body. That is when, in that, in that small slice of our jujitsu life, that's when we introduce the twist, right? Because if you can do it with just the pull and extension of the legs, that's preferable. But we'll run into those cases. Let's say I'm a lot smaller than her. I can't, I can't get as much extension, right? So we get here, I'm pulling for everything that I've got. And yeah, there's tension on your shoulder, but you don't carry it, right? So now what, I, what you'll see a lot of people do for typical Kumara is they go here and they're pushing this up, right? And they get up here and they're like, hey, it's still not working. And then they're trying to like really, and I start crunching down here and all, all kinds of things start to work against me. Like the elbow starts dropping, which look at that. I mean, same level of tension and her hand goes flying up in the air. So if I start trying to put the hand behind the back, she's like, well, I don't care, right? And now I just ran out of room to do my submission. So what I wanna do is I wanna continue the extension of the hips away. And now I wanna focus on keeping everything super tight here. Be disciplined about this. Notice how my elbows are tight to my body, as tight as possible. Then I'm rotating my shoulders. Okay, this is another big body motion that you have a lot of control over. I'm not, I'm not here going, <clears throat> trying to jam it up in the air or anything like that. I'm here hugging everything tight, doing this, all right? And we all do jujitsu, we've got good course. We should be able to twist and get the job done, all right? So we focus on our extension of our legs and think about it that way. Don't think about necessarily pulling the arm off the body. That's what we're effectively trying to do but we want to think about our legs first, being engaged on the hips. We want to think about this arm hooked around the elbow. That's what's pulling the arm off the body and creating that tension in the shoulder. So we extend, keep everything tight, and just turn our shoulders until we get the tap. Okay? And you felt like I'm like locked into your hips the whole time. All right? I haven't opened up my guard. I've changed things as little as possible. Right, and that's always my goal in jiu-jitsu. I don't want to make big changes to the configuration of what I'm doing. Every time I change the configuration, I'm giving my opponent an opportunity to escape and to use it against me. So if I can submit somebody from closed guard without ever opening up my guard, yeah, that's what I want to do. Right, because what happens if I fail? Nothing. The situation hasn't changed. I haven't given them an easier opportunity to pass or anything like that. Right? So again, focus on staying tight, extending, and don't extend quite as much this time, but now introduce the turn of the shoulders. Okay? All right, let's try that. So there's, there's all, these, all these light bulbs going off about, you know, basic mechanics of what we're trying to do to, to threaten to break somebody, right? We know we gotta create a bunch of tension in the joint. And the reason I described the you know, engagement of your legs on the hips and having your arm out at the, at the elbow. The reason I, you know, described it that way was because that also fixes other questions that came up. Like, you know, for example, there's a question of, 
okay, when I'm doing this, am I trying to turn this way? Well, no, because I'm, if I'm trying to do a sideways crunch, I'm not going to be able to efficiently extend as much as I can. Like if I'm, if I'm here and I'm trying to extend my legs, I can't do a sideways crunch and efficiently extend my legs. If what I do is I focus mostly on extending and just trying to pull the arm off by it. See how my arm is locked in at the elbow? I can't pull her arm off her body if it's up by the shoulder. It ought to drift out here naturally. And just focusing on, I'm, I'm in a nice comfortable position. Right? And just extend away, we've got it, okay? And if I get as much tension as I can, it's not quite working, turn my shoulders, and we've got that, okay? Now, if I do all this, if I get here, I turn, and things are still not happening, then and only then will I let this come up this way, right? But notice I'm still keeping my elbow tight to my body, right? So I'm basically just trying to take my elbow up on top, right? So there, it's barely extending, mm -hmm. but this was, but it was still controlled, right? Yes. You never felt like you were in any actual danger, just things yeah. were getting slowly tighter and tighter. Mm -hmm. And because I have that engagement on the hips and I have that engagement on the shoulder, even if she tries to push up off of the ground with her hand or tries to elevate her head, this becomes extremely difficult, right? I'm not here, right? If she pushes up, yeah, that, that kind of thing can start to happen. All right, without belaboring the point, I, I just want to talk about closed guard, right? So now that we've got all that, right, we've got the finishing mechanics, we've, we've, we've talked about how the joint works and all that. Now we can start talking about the setups, okay? So anytime, obviously, anytime that I can get the person's hands out on the mat, that's going to be our entry to a bunch of things, right? They know they don't want to have it there. I know they don't want to have it there. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to control the wrist, okay? And stiff arm. And one thing that people will do to try to resist the kimura from this position is they'll really drop their elbows in, inside. Let me get somebody. I need. Yes. This is the part for the bigger, stronger. So that's the mat, right? Right. So that's on the mat. He turns his elbow to the inside. Right. If I try to wrap over that, it's not really happening, right? But the stiff arm. Yeah. I mean, like, so if you if you if you're bringing your hand back or anything like that, pulling pulling back a bit. I like get more posture, right? I'm still keeping it relatively down here. But my goal is when I get them to put a little bit of weight into it, this hand is going to come up over. I'm going to wrap as far around his elbow as possible. Okay, turn this way a little bit. So what I'm doing is I get a little bit of weight on that hand. I'm up. Grabbing all the way around, trying to grab the tendons on the inside of his elbow, okay? From here, I make sure that I stay nice and strong on that hand. And as I come back this way, I'm pulling it forward, okay? That gets it into the orientation I need. Now from here, I'm taking this hand and just sliding through. And notice I give him that another little bump. So I'm using, in order to get, turn your elbow in a little bit more. Just, yeah, that's fine. But you don't want to get comored. So, yeah. here, wrapping around the joint, grabbing onto the tendons, and I'm sitting back. St stiff arm, right? Now I'm at two stiff arms, and now I can pump them forward a little bit more, get a little bit of crunch, lock this in, right? Now we've got everything that we need. We never opened up our guard. Okay. Now, if you've this, this can, you know, yeah, sure. If I get him broken down into more of a clinch, and he sits up, right, I can come up over top. Yeah, that might work, right. But anybody who's been doing jujitsu for a while, they know this is super dangerous, right? They're going to be turning their elbow in preemptively. So we want to wrap right around. No matter how we got here, wrap right around as far as we can. And resist that. OK. 
okay? So we're using this stiff arm action to bring it forward. Turning there, pushing that as much as I can, pulling this as much as I can, and the farther up here I get him, you know, if I pull him in a little bit more, then we dive in and we've got our grip, right? Using a C-clamp grip on the wrist, because it's moving around a lot, so I want that C-clamp, and thumb over on the second one, right? Because it's a stronger grip. Paul, and if you get there and somebody who's stronger reaches back to defend by grabbing their own belt, would you switch to omoplata, or would you just, would, do you have a trick for freeing it? Oh yeah, I got lots of tricks. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's let's just do that setup now. And the Make sure that you are that's also when you sit back. Yep. The joint, that's what you're saying, like so when you like come around here yep. like that, so I want as much here. engagement yep. around there as possible. Here, I'm as far around as I can reach. So when you sit back, yep. so start going straight arm here. Yep. That's I mean, you're, just, you're bending your arm. I want you. To, let me let me do a turn. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and all of a sudden it's like not have, there's no play. That is a game changer. You took all the slack out. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 That's a game changer because yeah. that's like a simple yeah. move that you know big guys like us. I'm getting up here. Yep. Right yeah, I'm spending all my time reaching around. Yeah. Obviously, I can't. This is this is not but happening. But see, I can do that, and that that's. No, I mean, if you can lock it up from here, then you're that, just doing a regular corner. That's and that's the only thing that yeah. works for me. I can't. My but, little hand won't. But I, I get a lot of guys that think they can just do this, and okay. you have to get on that. And as I as I drop back. Yeah. Keep your own straight. Yeah. Because eventually, get. yeah, eventually, I'm going to by pushing the wrist away and pulling on the elbow. Eventually. Mm -hmm. It's going to turn, okay. right? And like here, she's still pretty far away from me. So I've got this. I'm going to be really aggressive about pulling. Now I can pull everything in. Once I've got the bend in the arm, okay. I can use my legs, use my arms, and, and then get the rest away. Okay. All right. So I know I know this is a class about doing kimuras from the clothes guard to your friends and making it really safe. Um, but your reward for taking the very last. <laughs> last class of the last day and uh, being one of the diehards. Now I'm going to show how this applies to other situations. The, the, what you learned here actually applies to a bunch of other places. Okay? So, here. And let's try this one. So let's say, for example, that I'm doing an old plata. Right? Here. Yeah. I'm going to make this happen. <laughs> All right, so look. Here's another case where when you're dealing with flexible people, you get here, you know, and there's, I'm not, it's, this is not an Omoplata class. I just want to show you how what I showed you about the Kimura applies to other places, okay? So when I do an Omoplata, yes, I could come in here, I could bring this underneath, I could put lots of pressure on the shoulder and, you know, drive up. But when you get really flexible people, if you just do it from here, I go up, I go up, I go up, I go up, I go up. Wow, this is gonna break. I'm going here, and everybody's going, stop killing her, <laughs> right? But no, she didn't even raise her hand. She's not ready to tap yet. If they're not raising their hand, they're not ready to tap, all right? That's my, that's my connection to what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. So instead of, we know that if the elbow is up here, it's going to create more tension on the joint. I'm creating some bending pressure on the joint mm -hmm. by being heavy on the shoulder, but I still want to, before I get into the twist, I want to have not only a bend this way, but I'd like to increase the bend this way, all right? So, I'm gonna scoot forward, scoot forward, scoot forward, scoot forward, keep going, keep going, keep going. Once I get things all the way up there, I don't have that up yet. It's gonna be tougher. I'm gonna have to switch. Back here. Scoot forward, scoot forward, and then lift. Oh, still not enough. Excellent. This is why I, this is why I picked somebody flexible for this. Right? I'm gonna have to get more aggressive. I have to push off the pants. Go forward even more. Oh, God. The joint hasn't. Oh, look at that! I haven't got up to my knees at all. I got the submission. <laughs> I got the submission purely by 
moving her elbow up. So you get here, they wrap their arms around your body, right? They do that number. All right, cool. Get up here and do this. Harry Witt taught this a few years ago. So I'm here, and can I get the submission by twisting? Oh boy, I just ran out of range of motion on that. I could, I guess, get down here, but now I'm, I don't like this. I'm getting hunched over. I don't have good posture. Even if I try to pull the arm off the joint on her, this is still, I don't like this. So, in somebody like this, I'm going to spend more time going forward up here like this. Oh, look at that. Wow. Yep. Mm. Damn. Yeah, definitely the stop killing her range. <laughs> Right, and, and there are, it's not that there aren't other things that she could do, but I want to demonstrate that, you know, you can use the same principles in other positions. You know, when we are attacking that shoulder, we would really like to bring this elbow up as far as humanly possible. All right, if we can do that, we have a bit more control over what's going on. And we can take out the natural advantages that someone who's flexible has. And so whether I'm doing an you know, Oplata, whether I'm doing a Kimura from you know, some other weird position. You know, from a closed guard, it's the easiest to demonstrate it. But you've got not just the Kimura, you've got more knowledge about how to break joints. It makes me think about the arm bar, how it's so much easier to extend it when it's above the arm and straight out, and so you're weaker here. Well, we're trying, to, we're trying to break the elbow, so I don't care. All these orientations are almost arbitrary. In the case of the arm bar, I'm trying to expand the elbow joint or twist it. Yeah. To, to, you know, the primary braking mechanics are the bend. The enhancers are twisting it or expanding the yeah. joint. So yeah. Coach, I, I'm just, by what I've just, you know, witnessed here, my, my brain's like, oh, like wow, of course. <laughs> I see the common denominators. Whenever we're doing a movement with this, the, the danger on the shoulder is this direction. The elbows are higher than the shoulder, then this gets more structurally yeah. weaker. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah, we're, it's, it's like we're pre-tensioning what we're trying to submit. We're trying to take all the slack out in multiple yeah. different ways. Nice. Right? And uh, just as a last little, last little tidbit, um, there will be scenarios where you can't get at the elbow, right? And once you start not being able to control the elbow and the Kimura, then we start getting into, okay, now in order to add more pressure, since I can't expand the joint, I'm gonna to have to bend the joint. Right? I'm gonna to have to put my forearm across the shoulder in order to introduce more pressure before I twist. So it's like I want the enhancers almost kind of come first before the primary braking mechanics. Right, right. You can do it the other way around. I mean, it's, it's all gonna end up in the same place anyway. But like if I'm doing a knee bar, I would prefer to compress the joint before hipping in. Yeah. Right. The secondary things are a little easier to get rather than the primary braking mechanics. And if you add the enhancers in, as soon as you start on the primary braking mechanics, it's a lot more convincing. Okay? Nice. Any more questions? All right, cool. Let's let's get a let's get a hardcore group photo then. Yeah. <laughs>